Welcome to Connecting the Dots, the channel where we follow the breadcrumbs and try to predict where disruptions will take us. A few weeks ago, robotics startup Figure AI released a video showing their humanoid robot Figure 01 inserting a capsule into a coffee machine and initiating brewing. And a week later, Tesla released a clip of their second generation Optimus robot folding a shirt. While laundry folding is more complex and requires dexterity, there is a catch. Optimus was remotely operated, following a human operator's movements via remote control, while Figure's robot achieved its task through end-to-end -end neural network training. But what is end-to-end -end training, and what other ways are there to train the AI? In this video, we will go through the latest in robotics AI. We will see AI agents playing basketball and mastering martial arts. We will show robots playing soccer and delve into how they were trained. We'll find out why FSD training is centralized, but robots can learn alone. We'll discuss the fallacy of requiring big data. And we'll end with a face-off between Figure and Optimus, where no punches will be pulled until we determine which humanoid robot reigns supreme. Patrons are the ones who make this channel possible, so a massive thank you to all of you. You guys rock. And now buckle up and get ready, because Figure and Optimus are about to disrupt everything, and disruptions are never boring. 2023, simulations, soccer, and martial arts. In some of my previous videos, I showed AI training through simulations. This involves creating a computational model of the robot and its environment, then running simulations countless times until the robot figures out the best methods for specific tasks. Let's watch how Google DeepMind got robots to teach themselves soccer. In this project, we've trained physically simulated humanoids to play a simplified version of 2v2 football, in North America also known as soccer. To achieve that, we use a combination of imitation learning, reinforcement learning, and population-based training. Before training, the physically simulated humanoids make random movements and do not produce competent behavior. After training a population of agents for three days wall clock time, or the equivalent of five years of simulated matches, the agents have learned the basics of gameplay, running towards the ball and scoring. After more training, the gameplay is increasingly coordinated and features longer horizon behaviors that reflect anticipation of the consequences of actions. Our virtual football environment consists of humanoid bodies simulated in the Mujoku physics engine. The gameplay emerges as the agents that control the bodies learn to stand, locomote, and dynamically move to interact with the ball and the other players. Gameplay consists of 45 second bouts of play from random initial configurations. When a team scores a goal, each agent on that team receives a reward. Then the player positions are reset and the game continues. Note that our environment implements simplified football rules. There are invisible pitch boundaries that keep the ball in the field. Also, play is not interrupted by penalties or set pieces. Training of the agents is divided into three major phases. Low-level motor skills, mid-level single-player drills, and high-level goal-oriented team coordination. The low-level motor skills are achieved by imitation of motion capture. Mid-level skills are acquired through reinforcement learning on drills and consolidated into priors for future use. Finally, team coordination is learned through reinforcement learning in the context of 2v2 games between teams drawn from a population of agents. For basic skills, the robots watched videos of people playing soccer. Mimicking humans from these videos enabled the robots to learn basic moves such as walking, running, kicking the ball, and getting up. I am using the term robots loosely here, as at this stage we'll watch simulated robots or digital agents, but we will later move to actual robots doing the same. After mastering basic movements, the robots progressed to reinforcement learning. Here, they applied their skills to learn four specific drills, following a moving target, dribbling a ball to follow a target, accurately kicking towards 
a target, and finally, scoring goals. These drills were then distilled as policy priors, serving as foundational elements for learning even more advanced behaviors. In a fascinating display of teamwork and strategy, pairs of robots were set to play two-on-two -two soccer matches. For reinforcement learning, each goal scored not only rewarded the scoring robot, but its teammate too, fostering coordination skills like passing and blocking. What's powerful about simulations is that they can run faster than real time. And in parallel, DeepMind ran thousands of simulations in just a few days, the equivalent of five years practice for physical robots. Yet, to ground these theories, real world testing is essential. A soccer match at DeepMind looks like fun and games, but here's the thing. Humans did not program these robots to play. They learned the game by themselves. It's coming up with these interesting different strategies, different ways to walk, different ways to block. And they're doing it. They're scoring over and over again. This 60 Minutes clip shows real robots playing soccer. Of course, these scrappy robots aren't even close to the agility that the simulated ones had. But DeepMind didn't attempt to build expert soccer playing robots. They just wanted to validate their theories in physical form. And for this, even scrappy bots will do. Sebastian Stark used a similar approach to enable neural animation layering for synthesizing martial arts movements. Sebastian focused on enabling more natural animation of people in sports, such as when the upper body of a boxer throws a punch, the lower part of the body must move accordingly for the movement to look natural. Growing from basic moves to complex ones, Sebastian got the AI to learn basketball moves, dancing, and martial arts. I said that he got the AI to learn because in all these examples, humans didn't teach the robots, they just set up a system of incentives for progressively challenging actions and let the AI find out by itself how to optimize performance and get more rewards. For a deeper dive, I'll leave a link to both DeepMind's and Sebastian's papers in the video description. A personal story. Let me tell you a brief personal story from my early days as an aerospace engineer, which sheds light on robotics AI. My first job as a young aerospace engineer was in some kind of national lab where based on the research we did, peer reviews and all, we received a weird equivalency to positions in academia. By the time I left, I had tenure. And if I recall correctly, I was considered an associate professor. I don't remember exactly. It's all very bizarre and strange. And the reason I'm telling this is that one day a colleague explained how lucky we are to work in aerodynamics. Software engineers must learn a new programming language every few years, but for us, physics remains constant. Air behaves as it did 50 years ago, and from the day we graduate, we barely need to learn new things. Do not try this at home. This was terrible advice, and learning should never stop, but he did have a point in that time constants were low and the fundamentals remained the same. Later, transitioning to software, I was thrust into a world of perpetual change, but the pace of change was still nothing like AI. The contrast became starkly evident a few years ago during a session I participated in where big name engineers reviewed work we did and gave their remarks. The engineer scheduled before me worked in AI and to one of the comments she replied, yes, but older research papers are pretty much obsolete. We have no use for them. When asked what she meant by older papers, she clarified this means last year's methods because almost anything published a year ago is now obsolete. A few years later, I recalled this story to a friend and she confirmed it. In the fast evolving realm of AI, even a year is too long. Research papers are usually published before, not after. They are peer reviewed because waiting for the review would make them outdated by the time they are out. That's one hell of a difference from what that guy told me about aerodynamics and I told you all this because things move fast in the world of AI. Simulations are interesting and fun, and they are still very valuable, but they are so 2023. It's 2024 now, and AI training has evolved dramatically. With that in mind, let's discuss end-to-end -end neural net training. 2024, end-to-end -end neural net training in large language models. Figures robot learned to operate the coffee machine by observing humans operating it. DeepMind's soccer playing agents also learned by watching videos of humans playing soccer, but they learned basic skills such as walking or getting up, whereas today's robots can grasp more complex procedures in the same way. 
We are now at a point where just showing a robot a few times how to perform a task is enough for the robot to learn it, and we are not far off from the point where just telling it what you want could be enough to do the trick. The watching part is a bit deeper, so let's start with the telling it part, as it's easier to explain. With large language models like ChatGPT and Grok, robots can understand plain language and have discussions. We are not far from the point where it is enough to tell robots what we want done. If they know how to do it, they will, but if they don't, they will either use their previously acquired skills to try and complete the task, or ask us to guide them if they can't figure things out. We are not fully there yet, but this part is simple, really. The heavy lifting comes in that first part of showing the robot what to do and have it learn from our actions without having to demonstrate a thousand times and run millions of simulations. To explain how this works, let's compare it to something familiar, FSD V12. Tesla's full self-driving version 12 is trained using end-to-end -end neural networks, a method of photons in, control commands out. The system learns to drive by watching videos from cars piloted by humans. Tesla's data collection system harvests millions of video snippets, measurements, and driver actions from the fleet. All this data arrives at Tesla's data centers where training is performed centrally on massive servers. Once ready, Tesla updates the cars with a new set of skills. Figure's coffee machine demo used a similar approach of watching humans and mimicking their actions. So we know how it's done, but this raises two huge questions many of us have been pondering. First, how can these robots learn complex tasks from just a few videos when FSD requires millions? And second, how can the robot learn by itself when FSD training is centralized and uses massive servers? The answer to both questions starts with the size of each problem. Driving requires high safety levels and quick decision making and is performed in infinitely changing settings. The required actions are constantly changing with traffic, pedestrians, animals, lighting, and weather. When each road is different and even traversing the same one a few minutes later might require completely different inputs, the amount of data and processing power required are immense and so millions of videos are used with the training performed on central servers. In factory work, however, the price of failure is much smaller than with driving and with correct measures, it can be kept small. There is more time to react. Mostly, the problem tends to be more repetitive and predictable. Each car looks the same, arrives at the same place and under the same lighting. And when there is variability, it is usually handled in a well-known way. Obviously, this requires orders of magnitude smaller training data and compute. But there's one more thing. Consider this AI art created by my friend on X, Ash Martian, X handle first Mars colonist. Image creation AI, such as Dall E and Midjourney, don't have a clue on what Optimus looks like. So how did Ash get stable diffusion to know how to draw it? The answer lies in LoRa, or low rank adaptation models. LoRa models are a streamlined approach to teaching new tricks to existing, pre-trained AI. To put it in human terms, instead of teaching someone from scratch how to paint everything in the world, including Optimus, you take a trained painter and show them what Optimus looks like. So while training stable diffusion to create beautiful images took massive amounts of data and massive compute, just showing it what Optimus looks like requires very few pictures, and since it modifies just a small subset of the model's parameters, it can be done locally. For example, Ash Martian used in her LoRa 50 frames from the Optimus video, and as this post shows, even 10 images can be enough, and processing them takes five minutes. Applying this concept to humanoid robots, if the robot arrives pre-equipped with baseline skills like getting up, walking, manipulating objects, and using power tools, then AI methods similar to LoRa enable it to learn new, high-level tasks by simply observing humans performing them. A few repetitions of the task captured in videos can be enough for the robot to understand and replicate the actions via imitation learning. This completely transforms the way we teach robots, making it intuitive and efficient. As I said in that personal story, the old methods just don't cut it. While simulations are still valuable and are even used by imitation learning, mimicking humans saves numerous runs 
and makes training much faster. A fully automated factory with humanoid robot workers is a huge deal, and I wonder how differently a story like this would be framed politically. It's important to get the full picture so we don't fall for narratives that may not be true. That's why I use Ground News. Ground News is an app and website developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news, with access to over 50,000 news sources from across the political spectrum. It provides users with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias on each source reporting, factuality, and ownership for every story, which is backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. For example, from January 29 to February 11, Tesla plans to pause production in Giga Berlin due to supply issues caused by shipping companies taking longer routes to avoid getting attacked when crossing the Red Sea. In coverage details, we see that 79 sources are reporting this story, mostly leaning towards the center. Scrolling down, I can visually see the sources on the bias distribution chart, with 21% leaning left and 28% leaning right. Ground News allows you to quickly grasp a story's highlights and compare how sources from different sides cover it before diving into the articles. When there are significant differences between how the right and the left cover a story, the Bias Insights feature highlights them. I love using the My News Bias feature, which is fully unlocked through the Vantage plan and helps me monitor my news diet. To avoid entering echo chambers, I prefer viewing a 50-25-25 split between centrist, right-leaning, and left-leaning sources and this tab helps me keep track and balance the news I consume. Ground News helps me get to the root of stories without falling for narratives. Subscribe through the link in my description, ground.news slash ct dots, for 40% off the Vantage plan which I'm using. Subscribing not only supports me, but also an independent platform trying to make the news more transparent. Train your own robot. You might think I'm oversimplifying when I say teaching a robot to mimic human actions is as straightforward as using a LoRa model in stable diffusion. But in reality, it only takes a few tries. A collaboration between Stanford researchers and Google DeepMind birthed at a fascinating project called Mobile Aloha. This wheeled robot, an evolution of the earlier Aloha model, can be manually operated by a human to perform tasks. While this uses mechanical links, it is very similar in concept to Tesla's teleoperating the robot in the shirt folding video. Remarkably, just a handful of demonstrations are enough for the robot to grasp and execute these tasks independently. For example, Mobile Aloha mastered using kitchen cabinets after just three repetitions. It learned to operate elevators in five tries and managed to wipe wine off a table after nine demonstrations. The learning is evident in its adaptability, as the robot could handle unexpected changes, such as having additional chairs to push closer to the table. As Farzad always says, the robots are coming. I have to admit that even I was overblown by the pace of progress. While I closely predicted factory robots arriving at this time, I never imagined them being this close to home ready as they currently are. Even researchers admit that they are surprised by the recent pace of AI. Which brings me to the Tim Urban meme from Wait But Why. If you see AI doing monkey tricks, it will soon overtake Einstein. The mobile Aloha model is available online. There's a link below, and there's even a hardware assembly tutorial so you can build your own DIY robot, install the software, and make your life more interesting long before you can buy one from Tesla and others. If any of you go through with this project, please DM me on X. I really want to be in the loop and see it done. It's both creepy and fun. Let's take a brief detour to share something intriguing and slightly offbeat that I discovered during my research. Picture this, a bustling hot pot restaurant in Chongqing, China, with an unusual attraction drawing in the crowds. Drinks and dishes are served to the tables by a robot waitress. Watching her work is both creepy and fun. But here's the twist. The robot waitress is actually not a robot at all. She is Lee Quinn, the restaurant owner and a skilled street dancer renowned for her robotic dance moves. She disguises herself as a robot and serves patrons without immediately revealing her true identity, leading to delightfully surprised reactions when she eventually does. Dancing while serving tables enables Quinn to sharpen her dancing skills, attract customers to her restaurant, have fun at work, and spread smiles all around. Although not really robotics, I could not let it slip by. Privacy, character, and humanizing robots. As we've seen, 
training can be done locally on the robot, which is not just convenient, but also crucial for privacy. For instance, BMW can train a robot for a specific task and replicate that learning across their fleet, same as done with FSD. The key difference here is privacy. When the learning is local, it becomes easier for BMW to keep its manufacturing secrets within the company. Sure, this can be arranged differently, as in figure departmentalizing each of its clients' data on its servers, and there's a good chance that that is what they'll do. But the capability of local training is especially important with retail robots because anything you teach your robot should remain your own. Imagine the potential chaos if teaching your robot to pick up your child from school inadvertently led to other robots learning the same task. With both shared and private training possible, this opens the door for a marketplace, akin to an app store for training data. While all robots might come with basic abilities like walking, companies like Tesla and Figure could offer additional skill packages, ranging from using hand tools and gardening to more creative pursuits like dancing. And adding third-party vendors could add more variety. Imagine downloading a package which teaches your robot to dance like Beyonce or to move like Jagger. Picture your garage band's drummer quitting. With a simple download, your robot could step in and play your music as if he's John Bonham, Dave Grohl, or Tool's Danny Carey. <laughs> yes, I know that we aren't there yet when it comes to mechanicals as well as AI, but you know it, and I know it, that it's only a matter of time because the possibilities truly are endless. And there's one more thing that private training unlocks. It endows robots with unique personalities or character. In fact, we've seen this in DeepMind's soccer playing AI. While basic skills were common, training for higher level skills was individual, which led every robot agent to have its own qualities. One was a great scorer, the other great at blocking, another good at both. This made for more interesting soccer matches, but in my eyes, it did something else, which is to give each agent its own character. We're not at the stage of AGI yet, but the lines are starting to blur. Even with current AI software like Grok, Bard, and ChatGPT, many of us interact with them as if they were sentient. Have you ever found yourself thanking ChatGPT for giving an answer, saying please to Bard, or replying humorously to Grok? In all truth, thanking them is as smart as thanking the elevator, but it reflects our tendency to humanize technology. This will be even more pronounced with embodied AI. If you're close to your phone, how will you treat your house robot, which answers your questions like ChatGPT, assist with household tasks, and knows all your preferences and secrets? Shaped by your interactions, it will develop a distinct personality, very different from that of mine. Robots will come in an infinite number of flavors, and even without AGI, they will seem very much alive. Now add AGI, which begs to arrive, and the world will forever be changed. The possibilities are endless, but I am digressing, so let's go on. The data fallacy. Yesterday, Brighter with Herbert released a video of an X space he and some Tesla bulls had with Chris Camillo of Dumb Money. There's a link in the description. Chris is an early investor in robotic startups and recently started focusing on Tesla. His valuation model shows how, with extremely conservative estimates, Tesla is on the right track to becoming a $10 trillion company. That's double the current market cap of Apple and Saudi Aramco combined, yet it is intentionally conservative and seems like a done deal. While listening to the X space, I heard something Chris said, which I very humbly think is wrong. And if I am right, the correct valuation should be significantly higher. I am very serious as I think Chris fell for what I call the data fallacy. First, listen to this clip where Chris describes the change that visual learning had brought to the game. What we've experienced in AI this past year and to see the pivot that a lot of these humanoid companies are now taking and obviously Tesla uh, towards kind of full-fledged visual learning uh, relying on AI and how that could completely change the game for you know learning data sets uh and and kind of having a humanoid that doesn't just do one very simple thing but can do you know lots of things in, in a more robust manner um because of ai it's just completely changed the game for humanoids uh, chris acknowledges that full-fledged visual learning is a game changer which enables robots to easily learn multiple tasks 
Elsewhere, he explains that some startups are chasing specific use cases, while Tesla is going for a general purpose solution that can do many jobs. Now listen to this part, where Chris describes what he sees as Tesla's biggest hurdle and why his model sees Tesla ramping up only from 2028 onwards. There was one large hurdle to get over that, that would keep someone up at night uh, that, that should be keeping Elon up at night as it relates to Optimus. It is the learning data set. So when you think about the data set and how it's evolved with EV, um, we have lots and lots of humans every day training that data set. That does not exist right now for humanoids, right? So, so we don't have millions of humans wearing bodysuits right now today uh, in those manufacturing roles and those logistic ro ro roles, right? Uh, training, uh, you know, a data set for these humanoids. We, that just does not exist today. Uh, I could think of numerous ways to create that data set but it doesn't exist today. So we're looking at small data right now as it relates to the specific types of, of learning uh, that these humanoids will have to um, gain knowledge to. And that is probably the number one hurdle in terms of why we won't have these humanoids out in 2025, in my opinion, right, at, at production scale, because the, the, the data learning sets just aren't there yet. So th the way I see this unfolding over the next one to two years are there are a number of pilots happening. There are pilots that are either happening or that are on schedule to happen over the next 12 to 18 months, but virtually all of the early stage humanoid companies where these humanoids are going to be uh, piloted at some of the world's largest companies uh, in manufacturing and logistics. And that's where a lot of these learning data sets will be established. I would have to assume that Tesla being Tesla has a monstrously huge advantage there uh, in that they are not necessarily reliant just on outside companies uh, for pilots. They could obviously pilot these way more aggressively internally at Tesla. And I think that they will, but it just takes time. It's going to take time. Uh, although I think we'll see a lot of great videos this next year of humanoids doing tasks really well. Uh, I'm not so sure if we're going to get to the level of comfort where a company is going to say, give us 10,000, give us 50,000, right? We're ready, we're ready to ramp up our, our, our humanoid uh, on, our, on our manufacturing lines or we're ready to fill our warehouses with thousands of tens of thousands of humanoids. I don't see that happening until 2028, 2029. But again, the earliest, the earliest starts of that I think will happen in 2027. In my very humble opinion, this is completely wrong, I will explain. Chris is right saying that training FSD requires millions of videos, and I agree that the same goes for a future general purpose retail robot which could go to the store to bring groceries before it cooks your dinner. General purpose robots will need a hell of a lot of data. But Chris is wrong in assuming that this data is required and that not having it will delay Tesla's ramp because this data is not required for factory robots. As explained before, factory robots, dishwashing robots, and numerous other use cases operate in structured environments which can easily be handled by robots which were centrally trained to have basic skills, and then locally trained using very little data to do the required task. Remember Mobile Aloha? With imitation learning, it only takes a few tries to teach robots to do a task. So, of course, such robots won't be able to traverse a factory, walk across production lines, and pat others on their back. But that's not what they're needed for anyway. There are millions of open positions in low variability tasks that robots can fill without massive data. There's a huge bottom line here. But before saying it, let me just say that although I am nowhere near Chris's level as an investor, I am exceptional in looking forward where technology is involved. So very humbly, but also very confidently, I have to say. Start the ramp earlier, Chris. The bottom part of the ramp will go to Tesla's factories, but they will ramp early. There's a huge incentive to do so, as each robot would save them around $250,000 in annual costs. And besides that incentive, 
there's the technology. Because if Mobile Aloha can learn from a few demos, there is next to zero probability that half a year from now, Optimus still won't. Intuitively, I see Tesla gradually starting mass production around the end of 2024. It could happen way before that or slightly after, but they will start mass production within this period. Unlike figure AI, production for internal use is still part of the ramp. And by the time they start offering robots to others, production will be much higher up the production ramp than Chris expects. I haven't run through the numbers, but let's do this intuitively. Chris's valuation model puts Tesla at $10 trillion with mass production starting 2027 or 2028. If I am correct and mass production starts two or three years earlier, then I do believe we need to add another zero. Optimus or figure, who will win? This video started off in response to mainstream media saying that BMW has beaten Tesla to the punch by being the first automobile manufacturer to use humanoid robots in its factories. Of course, that's not true as BMW hasn't started and we don't know about Tesla, but I plan to make this a face-off between the two robots. I then switched to training, but this part still fits. So let the games begin and may the best robot win. Figure AI's simple yet impactful coffee machine demonstration was a chat GPT moment for humanoid robots. The video quickly went viral, generating significant buzz. Following its release, billionaire investor and All In Podcast co-host Jason Calacanis expressed interest in investing in the company. Shortly thereafter, Figure AI announced their deal with BMW and then closed their order books to new orders. Until that demo, Figure AI was a startup with ambitious visions and limited funding, but that demo solidified their future and put a spotlight on them as a prominent player. With a promising product, a talented team, funding, and clients, I have no doubt that their robot will achieve mass production and propel the company to significant success. Tesla is already successful, of course. Optimus is highly promising, and they have a great team and huge funding. So I have no doubt that Optimus 2 will reach mass production and meet great success. Both robots are being developed in response to the global labor shortage, a challenge affecting millions of jobs in manufacturing and other sectors. This shortage is only expected to worsen, creating a demand for countless robots, even without displacing humans. There will be demand for millions upon millions of robots. It will likely take years for supply to catch up to this surging demand, so both companies will face massive demand in a growing market. Considering the economics, the value proposition of a single robot is substantial. A robot's ability to work continuously with consistent speed and quality and without the need for breaks, benefits, or even sleep, translates into substantial cost savings. For instance, the ability of one robot to perform the work of several human workers round the clock could bring each robot's value to upwards of $200,000 annually. This isn't just a theoretical saving, it's a tangible, calculable benefit. Expanding this calculation across a global scale, where millions of potential roles could be filled by robots, we begin to grasp the immense impact these machines could have. Filling the labor shortage alone, without even replacing human workers, should be enough to provide quasi-infinite demand for both robots. Elon Musk discussed the potential for billions of humanoid robots to share the world with us, and small startup figure AI is unabashedly planning to sell millions of robots per year. With so much demand for years to come, both companies will find customers for every robot they can produce. So they aren't really competing. And the answer to the question of who will win, figure 01 or Optimus, is that they will both win and so will we. With all these robots, productivity and economic output will rise and the price of goods and services will fall. The world will reach huge abundance in ways previously unattainable. So both robots will win, but one will win more. Let's see who it is and why. So who will win? Figure showed end-to-end -end training while Tesla did not. But none of this matters. Consider the following. Two years ago, ChatGPT seemed like science fiction, but once it arrived, so did Bard, Grok, and dozens of small ones. And two years ago, image creation seemed like science fiction, but once DALI arrived, so did Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and dozens of small ones. Once an AI model is out, it becomes common and everyone has some version of it. So I do think that Tesla has already succeeded in showing end-to-end -end training like they did with FSD, 
But even if they haven't, it doesn't matter because in a very short time, they will. Everybody will, even small startups, as training will soon be a relatively solved problem. So even if Tesla didn't have end-to-end -end imitation learning, which again, I am confident they do, if they currently start producing robots and training them by running simulations to do simple factory work, they will have effective end-to-end -end learning long before these jobs are filled. In other words, even if Figure does have some advantage in training AI, this shouldn't slow Tesla's production by one iota. At current levels, training is not a limiting factor, so let's disregard it. And Figure showed end-to-end -end training while Tesla did not. But none of this matters. Consider the following. Optimus seems more dexterous than Figure and with a more polished design. For example, the huge wrist actuator on Figure's robot could prevent it from working in jobs which require fitting hands in tight places, and so human workers can do them while wearing watches. So what? Here too, none of this matters. There is so much demand in other jobs that even with the current dexterity and smoothness, Figure will find huge demand for its robot for many years. During these years, they will have more than enough time to update the design again and again. At current levels, dexterity is not a limiting factor, so let's disregard it as well. If AI and dexterity should both be ignored, what gets to decide which robot will win? Production does. Optimus is much more production ready than figure 01. Tesla is arguably the world's best manufacturer of smart electromechanical products. They have immense production know-how, and from day one they designed Optimus with production in mind. They are leaders in actuators, batteries, vision and perception, etc., etc. But mostly, they design products for easy, fast, efficient production. With its increased funding, I am sure that Figure will soon clean up their design and start limited production. But ask yourself this, if demand is high and supply is the limiting factor, which company will be first to produce 1,000 robots? 10,000 robots, a million robots? If you answered Tesla, so does Figure AI's CEO. Brett Adcock himself admits that Tesla will dominate the field. Both companies will win and so will we. But if we have to choose one winner, the cards have been dealt and Optimus should dominate the world of humanoid robots. Let's end with a fun case of an AI robot faking it. To wrap up with a smile, here's an amusing tidbit for you that will blow your mind. You're probably familiar with the saying, garbage in, garbage out, which highlights the crucial role of only using quality data in AI training. In DeepMind's soccer simulations, they forgot some garbage in, and then something went very wrong. Their matches were conducted without referees and lacked penalty enforcement, which led the AI to develop skills without regard for these aspects. However, the AI learned basic skills such as getting up by watching videos of real soccer games. These games do have penalties when a player gets hit, so when players fall, they sometimes avoid getting up. After quickly thanking my patrons, I'll show you this nugget. Believe me, it is worth waiting for. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Consider supporting me on patreon.com slash connecting o dots for as little as one buck a month. Your support really helps me make these videos and you'll also get my patron only newsletter videos. A huge shout out to my latest patrons, YouTube channel members, Joe A, Neeks2, Danny I, Opto4, and Ed B, and Patreon patrons, Martin S, Carlo H, David M, Brian A, Apollo E, Bill P, Bill W, Mark S, Tom R, Johnny V, Alexander G, Eric G, AGH, Joel A, Ron R, Michael R, Craig H, Kia Bobby K, and Francis H. And to all my patrons, you guys rock. Now, pay close attention to the red player's recovery after falling down and how long it will take him to get up. Let me know below what you think and keep watching because after he gets up, we will show some amazing soccer moves which the AI taught itself. Don't forget to check out Ground News, the sponsor of this video, at ground.news slash ct dots and take advantage of their 40% off sale on the Vantage subscription. You can also support the channel by sharing this video on social media. Please follow me on X, where I am connecting O dots. Until next time, I am connecting the dots, and you are amazing. And here are the AI developed soccer moves.
Against the wall and you cannot fall So come on, go on